You still going to treat me like the queen, but I'm going to address you like I'm his grandmammy. bugs hello there bellas if you have not already done so please remember to like share to facebook and or twitter subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com for today's looky looky this ultimate animal print turtle and don't forget all purchases over 40 dollars will come with a free gift and if you are not already a part of our book club please hit the patreon link below and or the join button here on the youtube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the youtube gets it if the youtube gets it now let's continue talking about prince harry's Space. I sent Violet a message. Who is this woman? She answered straight away. Yeah, I've had six other guys ask me. Great, I thought. Who is she, Violet? Actress. She's in a TV show called Suits. It was a drama about lawyers. The young woman played a young paralegal. Is she American? Yeah. What she's doing in London? Here for the tennis. It wasn't fair for her to shoulder the burden. But she was willing. She said, no choice, she said. The alternative was not seeing me. And that, she said, wasn't feasible. For the hundredth time since June 1st, my heart cracked open. Then we said goodbye again. See you in two weeks. Two weeks. God, yes. Soon after that day, Willie and Kate invited me over to dinner. They knew something was going on with me, and they wanted to find out what it was. I wasn't sure. I was ready to tell them. I wasn't sure. I wasn't ready to tell them. I wasn't sure I wanted anyone else to know just yet. But then as we sat around their TV room, both kids tucked into bed, the moment felt right. I casually mentioned that there was a new woman in my life. They surged forward. Who is she? I'll tell you. But please, please, please. I need you both to keep it a secret. Yes, Earl. Yes. Yes, who is it? She's an actress. Oh, she's an American. Oh, on a show called Suits. Oh, they turned to each other. Then Willie turned to me and said, fuck off. What? No way. Sorry. Impossible. I was baffled until Willie and Kate explained that they were regular viewers of Suits. Great, I thought, laughing. I've been worrying about the wrong thing. All this time, I thought Willie and Kate might not welcome Meg into the family. But now I had to worry about Willie and Kate asking Meg for a damn autograph. Meg came back to London a week later, October 2016. We lunched with Marco and his family, and I introduced her to a few close mates. All good. Everyone loved it. This is the part where she met the queen. This is hilarious to me because... Although she's the queen, she still is his grandmother. And she acted more like his grandmother than the queen. You still going to treat me like the queen, but I'm going to address you like I'm his grandmammy. It was all very pleasant. Granny even asked Meg what she thought of Donald Trump. This was just before the November 2016 election, so everyone in the world seemed to be thinking and talking about the Republican candidate. Meg thought politics a no-win game, so she changed the subject to Canada. Granny squinted. I thought you were American. I am, but I've been living in Canada for seven years for work. Granny looked pleased. Commonwealth, good fine. After 20 minutes, Granny announced she had to be going. My Uncle Andrew, seated beside her, holding her handbag, began to escort her out. Now, here we go, okay? Now, Meg and Harry finna go to Willie's house, okay? That's a problem because you know that Willie and Harry can be sometimes childish child, okay? So they at the door. 
Harry nervous. Willie like, come on in. Come on in. Meg. Willie looking at her like, oh, this is the suits bitch. Okay, hey, suits bitch. Hey, how you doing? Where's Kate? Kate somewhere with the kids. Okay, but it went well. Y'all, Lulu, right here. If you hear any snorting and growling and grunting and stuff like that, you know it's Lou. I flew to Toronto end of October 2016. Meg was excited to show me her life, her dogs, her little house. Girl, come on, Prince Harry. Can't you shade? Harry. Whenever somebody put little in front of it, you know it's like an old sarcastic remark. Like, I see you got your little girlfriend with you. Oh, I see you done bought your little Mercedes. Her little house, which she adored. And I was eager to see it all, to know every last detail about her. Though I'd snuck into Canada once before, briefly, this would be my first proper... So visit. anyway, Prince Harry is in town with Meghan over there in Canada, right? And she has a party to go to. The theme of the party was the apocalypse. At first I was like, what kind of bullshit is this that somebody would actually throw an apocalypse party? Because when I think about it, I'm like, wait a minute, the end of the earth? But it was actually like a Mad Max survivor type thing. Now he didn't have anything to wear. This is where he had told Megan, well, uh, I don't do too well with themed parties because the last time I did a themed party, it was an issue reflecting back to when his brother and sister-in-law told him it was okay to wear a Nazi uniform to this, I don't know what kind of party it was, but it was not cool. I turned to a friend, the actor, Tom Hardy, before I left home. I'd phone him to ask if I could borrow his costume from Mad Max. The whole thing? Yes, please, mate. The whole kit. He'd given it all to me before I left Britain. And now I tried it on in Meg's little bathroom. There he go again. With little. He'd given it all to me before I left Britain. And now I tried it on in Meg's little bathroom. When I came out, she roared with laughter. It was funny and a little scurry. But the main thing was, I was unrecognizable. Meg, meanwhile, wore torn black shorts, a camo top, fishnet stockings. If that's the apocalypse, I thought, bring on the end of the world. The party was loud, dark, drunk, ideal. Several people did double takes as Meg passed through the room, but no one looked twice at her date. I wished I could wear this disguise every day. In those first hours and days of November 2016, there was a new low every few minutes. I was shocked and scolded myself for being shocked and for being unprepared. I'd been braced for the usual madness, the standard libels, but I hadn't anticipated this level of unrestrained lying. Above all, I hadn't been ready for the racism, both the dog whistle racism and the glaring vulgar in your face racism. The Daily Mail took the lead. Its headline, Harry's girl is almost straight out of Compton, subhead, gang scarred home of her mother revealed. So will he be dropping in for tea? Another tabloid jumped into the fray with the jaw dropper, Harry to marry into gangster royalty. Okay, Paul, think about me and my wife. My wife is suburban, very sheltered life. Okay, she be like, oh, I come from Sea Pleasant. I be like, girl, you didn't go outside till that shit don't count, girl. Me and my okay. wife are very different when it comes to our upbringing. One, I was in in, you know, seeing the crack epidemic right there in the center of it, okay? My wife only heard about it, okay? Now, I wasn't smoking the crack. Not that I had problems with people who have had those struggles in their lives. I've made that very known that I don't have a problem with anybody and their addictions, Okay, I told you my biggest struggle will always be food. My wife is very attracted to the fact that I got a lot of hood in me. Now, I'm not 
like per se that type of girl who put a pistol in my name or a car in my name or anything like that but i definitely have some street stories that is the complete opposite of my wife my wife is attracted to that so when the press put out the fact that her mother is living in compton harry ain't get discouraged harry's pickle probably got hard you know you know what I'm saying, that thing, you know, just got more motivated. Okay. We already knew for the fact that the papers had put private investigators on Meg and on to everyone in her circle, in her life, even many not in her life. So we knew that they were experts on her background and boyfriends. They were Megologists. They knew more about Meg than anyone in the world apart from Meg. And thus they knew that every word they'd written about her and the hockey player was hot garbage. But they continued to answer the palace lawyer's repeated warnings with the same non-answers, which amounted to the mocking taunt. We don't care. I huddled with the lawyers trying to work out how to protect Meg from this attack and all the others. I spent most of every day from the moment I opened my eyes until long past midnight trying to make it stop. As a rule, Meg wasn't looking at the internet. She wanted to protect herself, keep the poison out of her brain smart, but not sustainable if we were going to wage a battle for her reputation and physical safety. I needed to know exactly what was fact and what was false. And that meant asking her every few hours about something else that had appeared online. Oh, oh my God. Ah! Oh, 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 girl, I couldn't make it. Is this true? Is that true? Is there a grain of truth in this? She'd often begin to cry. Why would they say that, Hazzy? I don't understand. Can they just make stuff up? Yes, they can. And yes, they do. If you have a weak-minded man or somebody who can't control their emotions or something, and then a situation like that happens, oh my God, the arguments. And you're like, why are we even arguing about this? This ain't happening. This ain't true. I don't get to have a, a previous life before you? I mean, come on, her. Three weeks later, I was getting an HIV test at a drop-in clinic in Barbados with Rihanna royal life the occasion was the upcoming world aids day and i'd asked rihanna at the last minute to join me help raise awareness across the caribbean to my shock she said yes why wouldn't she say yeah well I, okay yeah and let me tell you something that shit he pulling on megan markle you know damn well he couldn't pull that shit on the rihanna if he was to have gotten rihanna's face and was like, Rihanna, is any of this true? She probably would have told him kiss her ass. Because anybody that got the gumption to tell Drake to kiss her ass twice? Oh, baby, Rihanna is something special. And congratulations, baby, on that second baby. You know ASAP Rocky is a Libra, right? Okay. We get some old. Important day. Vital cause, but my head wasn't in the game. I was worried about Meg. She couldn't go home because her house was surrounded by paparazzis. She couldn't go to her mother's house in Los Angeles because it too was surrounded by paparazzis. Alone adrift, she was on break from filming and it was Thanksgiving time. So I'd reached out to friends who had a house sitting empty in Los Angeles and they generously offered it to her. Problem solved for the moment. Still, I was feeling worried and intensely hostile towards the press, and I was now surrounded by press. The same royal reporters gazing at them all, I thought, complicit. Then the needle went into my finger. I watched the blood spurt and remembered all the people, friends and strangers, fellow soldiers, journalists, novelists, schoolmates, who'd ever called me and my family blue bloods. Watching the nurse channel my blood into a test tube, I thought red just like everyone else's. I turned to Rihanna and we chatted while I awaited the result. Negative. 
Now I just wanted to run, find somewhere with Wi-Fi, check on me. We were connected just long enough for me to learn that she was safe at my friend's house. So he back with Meg, okay? And him and Meg been drinking a little bit, or at least he has. The wine went to my head. Maybe the weeks of battling the press had worn me down. For some reason, when the conversation took an unexpected turn, I became touchy. <laughs> then angry, disproportionately, sloppily angry. Meg said something I took the wrong way. It was partly a cultural difference, partly a language barrier, but I was also just oversensitive that night. I snapped at her, spoke to her harshly, cruelly. As the words left my mouth, I could feel everything in the room come to a stop. Meg walked out of the room, disappearing for a full 15 minutes. I went and found her upstairs. She was sitting in the bedroom. She was calm, but said in a quiet, level tone, she would never stand for being spoken to like that. I nodded. She wanted to know where it came from. I don't know. Where did you ever hear a man speak like that to a woman? Did you overhear adults speak that way when you were growing up? I cleared my throat, looked away. Yes. Listen, listen, I don't give a fuck about how many times you've heard your daddy and your mammy arguing. Just because your mama was, was, was an arguer or a bitch or your father was a fighter or a drug addict does not mean that that has to be your uh, end all be all. You can help. You feel like your, the troubles of your past is putting a wedge between you and your future. Nigga, you fix it. I cleared my throat, looked away. Yes, she wasn't going to tolerate that kind of partner or co-parent, that kind of life. She wasn't going to raise children in an atmosphere of anger or disrespect. You motherfucking right, God damn it. She laid it all out super clear. We both knew my anger hadn't been caused by anything to do with our conversation. It came from somewhere deep inside, somewhere that needed to be excavated. And it was obvious that I could use some help with the job. I've tried therapy, I told her. Willie told me to go, child. So if somebody didn't told you something before, you hear me? And this may be the second or third person telling you the same thing. Then nigga, don't push it to the back of the closet. Take care of no. it. No, she said softly. Then try again. I know that's right. Because Megan, you ain't pregnant yet. I don't think. Before you have babies with him, you might want to take care of this. Because he may make red-headed, angry little babies. Uh, so anyway, let me end it right here. Why you ninjas ain't tell me that Meghan Markle was out here doing soft porn?